Backwood Solar is America's oldest and most trusted solar retailer with nearly 50 years of experience. Head over to our website, backwoodsolar.com, to get a free copy of our planning guide. While you're there, check out our learning center with articles on setup, sizing, tax credits, and so much more helpful information, especially if you're just getting started with solar. There are also links provided in the description. All right, starting off with what you get in the box here. In the box is included the shunt, a small gauge red wire for power for the shunt with a small inline fuge, and then a secondary power wire to measure a secondary voltage or battery bank. You get the BMV display. The display on the back has the communication to make the communication between the display itself and the shunt the communication to the system or the servo this is the VE direct port and then we also here have the relay connection ports the common the normally open and the normally closed connections there and then as well with that you get a 30 foot RJ cable here to make your connection between the shunt and the display the heart of the energy meter itself is the shunt, so it's important to take close attention or pay close attention to the connection points on the shunt. You can see here you have two voltage connection points. That's where we're going to use our fine gauge red wire to connect with. You can see you have a VBAT or a, a B1 positive and a B2. B1 is going to be for our primary uh, voltage measurement as well as power to control the shunt and the display. And then our B2 connection is going to be for our secondary voltage measurement, uh, midpoint measurement, or if we're using a temperature sensor, we're going to just use both of these ports and fill it, fill it uh, with the temperature sensor. Um, it's also very important to take uh, note of the orientation of the shunt. You can see this one's here is marked battery only and load and charger only. So it's exceedingly important when you install these that only the battery negative is connected to one side and all of the other system device loads, um, chargers, etc. are connected to the other. That way every bit of energy that um, comes into or comes out of the battery bank is measured uh, through this shunt device. All right, here we are in Victron Connect. Um, you just want to be aware that depending on the size of your screen or your device, you might have a slightly different layout here when you first launch it. You might have these status, uh, history, and t trends bars here across the top, and that would have you click on those to give you this additional information here. Um, but let's just take a quick peek here to start with at kind of the base information we're getting here when we first uh, log into Victron Connect for the BMV 712. Uh, first thing we're going to be greeted with here is, of course, the percentage state of charge number. Over here to the right, we have uh, battery voltage, live, uh, current, how much current's leaving the battery bank um, at, at this given time. Uh, that number in watts, this is how many amp hours we've consumed out of the battery bank over this current charge cycle. Um, time remaining is how much time we have remaining until we have hit the discharge floor uh, based on this um, amount of current leaving, and we'll talk about that a little bit more in detail later. Um, down below that, we have uh, an optional secondary voltage measurement. In this case, measuring a starter battery. We'll also look at that a little bit more detail. Uh, look at that a little bit more in detail here shortly. And at the bottom here, we have the state of the relay on the back of the display. Um, if that relay is open or closed. Um, so the first thing we want to do here is go ahead and click on the gear icon in the upper right hand corner. Um, anytime we come into any of these devices we might find that it's prompting us for a firmware update and we can go ahead and do that uh, anytime the the device is prompting us to do so. So let's take a look here we'll start off in the battery tab. Starting off at the top here, we have um, battery capacity, and that's essentially what, what it suggests. 
This is the capacity of the batteries in the system. Uh, so what's the total amp hours uh, of the bank? Uh, next value here we have is the charge voltage. Charge voltage typically on these Victron shunts, um, the smart shunt or the BMV, we're typically going to set this charge voltage somewhere right at, or maybe even in some cases slightly below our, our, our battery float voltage. But I think float is a good place um, to start with that, uh, with this setting here. Uh, next up we have the discharge floor. Uh, the discharge floor is, if you remember a minute ago here where we were looking at time remaining, uh, that's time remaining till we reach uh, this discharge floor in percentage. So this is kind of user definable depending on how you want the meter uh, to calculate that time remaining. Uh, most folks leave this at 50%, but in some cases with lithium or other applications, we may want to represent all of the battery bank um, or even less of the bank, maybe in a lead battery situation. Uh, next up, we have tail current. Uh, tail current is a percentage number of amps moving through the system. It's a signal um, to the meter that the batteries are full, essentially, and they're no longer taking current. So um, kind of the quick way to look at this is this is 4% in amps of your battery capacity. So when the amps drop below in this case, 4% of the total, that's used as a signal for the meter as a, um, as a trigger that the batteries are full. Um, this is usually not something we're going to mess with most, most of the time, this 4% value, unless we have some extreme circumstances, is, is adequate here. Uh, next up we here, we have the charge detection time. Uh, that's essentially what it sounds like. It's how long are we waiting for these other um, values to become true or how long do they have to remain true for before we resynchronize to 100%. And typically three minutes uh, for most people here is, is perfectly fine. Uh, next, we have the Pukert exponent. Pukert exponent um, is essentially a battery discharge efficiency. Um, 1.25 is what's typically most commonly used for lead, uh, flooded lead acid style batteries. You might go down to 1.20 if this is maybe a high efficiency gel or AGM, um, or uh, we would set this to 1.05 if this is a lithium uh, battery application. Um, so typically we're at 1.25 or 1.05 for lithium. Um, next up here, we have a charge efficiency factor. 95% is typically what we're going to use for uh, lead chemistries, maybe 96, again, for a higher efficiency lead or a small bank. And then we would be putting this 98, 99% for most uh, lithium, uh, lithium applications. Uh, next, we have the current threshold. This is just the detection threshold. Leaving this at a tenth of an amp is, um, is, is probably adequate. There's not really any reason to, to change that. And then last up here, we have the time to go averaging period. This is the uh, how frequently we're averaging this discharge floor, the time to go number, our time remaining number till we hit discharge floor. How often are we kind of calculating that? Um, below that, we're going to look at this next value. This is usually something we like to adjust. Uh, this battery SOC on reset, uh, typically we're going to want to set this to keep SOC. Uh, that way, if the meter is powered down for any reason or um, is reset, um, it's going to remember the last percentage value rather than clearing or setting to 100%. Uh, this state of charge here is a place where we can set the, the percentage number manually. It's essentially what it seems like. It allows us to force the percentage to whatever given value we choose. Then we have a synchronize to 100%, which we may use on occasion if we know the batteries are full. And then this zero current calibration, which we almost never use unless there's some kind of issue. Um, so I don't recommend uh, using that.
uh, backing out of the settings here, um, looking at the relay tab next. This relay tab is how we define the behavior of the relay on the back of the display. Um, you know, usually we're only going to be using this if we have a use case like starting and stopping a generator, uh, triggering an alarm, things like that. So this is pretty straightforward. Um, relay mode here, we're going to, if we're using this to trigger a device or do other things, we're almost always leaving it in default. Um, Invert relay is kind of what it says. It's just going to change from normally open to normally closed or vice versa, depending on the position of the relay currently. Um, we have a minimum close time, um, which is, you know, if the relay is triggered, it'll have to stay closed for this minimum amount of time before it reopens, kind of like a, a delay where we don't, maybe in the case of a generator, don't short cycle a generator start. Same thing here, we have an off delay, so if we hit the off trigger, you know, how long are we waiting before we actually move the relay? And then below that, we have uh, where we set our SOC triggers, our state of charge triggers, uh, high and low, and then uh, voltage, uh, high and low voltage, as well as using the um, starter um, uh, relay here. So this is the um, using the data from the, the secondary battery measurement, the starter uh, battery voltage measurement to trigger that relay. So even less commonly used, but also here available. Uh, next up below that, we have the alarm tab. Alarm tab pretty much is what you'd expect in here. Being able to define some audible alarms um, from the BMV, the BMV does have a built-in buzzer, so it will uh, create a tone if any of these alarm triggers uh, are, are met. Uh, below that alarm, we have our uh, display tab. This uh, affects the behavior of the physical round display of the BMV 712. Um, so we can adjust things like the backlight, uh, the behavior of the backlight, and then what data points are being shown on that. Um, next up, we have the miscellaneous tab. Miscellaneous tab just defines uh, what this meter is used for. Most of the time, we're going to be using the BMV 712s as a battery monitor, but they also can be used as a DC energy meter, which is kind of an uh, interesting way of using these as well. And we can define when used as an energy meter, uh, what are we powering? You know, is this a third party? Uh, solar charger or alternator or you know what is this power and that way the system when connected to the VRM and the servo kind of understands what this power is or what it's being used for. Um, below that we have uh, our shunt uh, amperage. We're generally not going to adjust this. It's going to be set for the 500 amps in the factory. Sometimes we will swap the shunts out for various reasons if the system grows. So here's where we can make adjustments on the shunt size, uh, the shunt voltage drop, which is almost always 50 millivolts. And then this bottom, this aux input is, you know, what are what is the aux terminals on the shunt being used for? Uh, are we just using it as normal? We would mark it as none. Do we have a temperature sensor or are we measuring a secondary voltage like a, a generator starter or a midpoint of the battery bank voltage. Um, other than that, uh, the final tab here is the VE Smart Networking. This just allows the BMV to be put into a wireless Bluetooth network with other um, Victron Bluetooth smart devices. Um, if you're using a servo or um, you know, having this, uh, using this device in a standalone application, this is not probably something you would use, but in smaller, medium sized systems where maybe we have a solar charge controller and a shunt and, um, you know, a few other devices, we may choose to have them all kind of wirelessly communicating with each other for a variety of advantages and reasons. And that about does it for the base setup and programming of the BMV 712.